Olaf, king of the north, gazed from the banks of the sea of the northern way, tucked away in the fjord. All along this land the water cut into the coast like an outstretched finger that bent the earth. Throughout the north, mountains rose from the water from nearly every bank and tree, shaping and forming the realm of his forebearers, making a settlement difficult at best with limited farming land. But this village was different. Within the Thronder Fjord, the wide river Neath snaked around the small settlement of Nidoros, transforming the peninsula into a natural fortress carved out by the river's flow. Flames climbed the early morning sky, rolling over thatch and clay, consuming the village as it spread. Despite skies as clear as the ice, blue water below, a dark cloud had fallen over Nidoros. Along the docks that lined the beaches at the water's edge, a handful of longboats creaked as they broke beneath their own weight, weakened by the flames that consumed them. Their masts reached toward the sky like outstretched fingers, clawing the air as if desperate to live. Amid the thatched roofed houses, screams of women and children mingled with the ringing blades of his men. The fire, wor the fire worm within him purred, and he exchanged a satisfied look with Thor, who nodded toward the village. Olaf shifted his gaze and saw what exactly Thor had signaled to. A plump woman, bleeding and spirited, jiggled as she shuffled. She stepped lively with a bounce he would not have expected from someone of her years. She tied back her long blonde hair, streaked with thick lines of gray, and hoisted the skirts of her apron dress higher than what was necessary to walk up the hill where Olaf and Thor stood. She pushed her way past the shoulder soldiers, ignoring the dying and dead as a larger ring of keys tinkled at her waist. Before she could reach them, before she could unleash her temper, Olaf and Thor turned their backs and started for the small tent pitched a few spans away. Hi, am Olga! Olaf spun back around on display and pretended to be vaguely curious about thro the Thronder. Wife of Halvard, son of Sigurd, daughter of the land of Dothrar! Olaf grinned at the tightness in her voice. Olga had clearly done her best to harden the gentle lilt in her voice, but failed. Your Majesty, Olaf bowed low, sweeping the ground with the tips of his fingers. He was unusually tall for a son born to the race of man. So much so for that the point of his domed helmet almost grazed the earth before lifting his eyes back to Olga. And your slaughter at once, Olga shouted, unable to mask the waver in her voice. With a flourish of his scarlet cloak, Olaf looked back to Thor, who had patiently waited. Kill them all, Olaf said with a boredom he was sure Olga heard. Acts of kindness won't reach the years of Falkbeard on the high throne in Jutland. And when you find Jarl Hakon, cowering in his corner like the dog he is, bring me his head. He spoke loudly, ensuring the peasant heard every word over the ocean's waves and the sudden creak of a longboat as it split in two. She needed to understand. They all needed to understand. Olaf disappeared into his tent with Thor and grinned at the swishing of Olga's skirts as her haughty steps as she followed. So predictable, he thought, as Olga slept back the tent's hide flap. Olaf pulled the helmet off his shimmering blonde head. As blonde as the legends of fair hair, and Olga gasped. Many often had that reaction, but it never ceased to amuse him. Olaf passed his helmet to Thor, who added it to the rest of the armor ornately displayed in the corner between a table of fruits and a desk of maps. In the center of the room, a fire burned. Daughter of Dothrar, Olaf said, greeting the Thronder with an air of boredom as he removed his cloak with a flourish and handed it to Thor. The warmth of the tent, the glamour of the rich silks and rare exotic furs did little to deter Olga as she snarled through a guttural hiss. Word of your exploits has travelled far, she said, reaching as far north as Hodeland. You say you seek to force the Empire's god on us, an impressed glimmer shone in Olaf's eye. That you look to rid us of Odin and Thor, Olga said, but we've learned quickly here. You don't seek to take a birthright back from Hagen or impose the Empire's beliefs. Throndelog belongs to Dan's reach. You target Fort Beard's land. Olaf studied the woman, surprised at her boldness and her accuracy. He looked long and hard, taking care to examine the woman before him. With the right wording, the right timing, he could pass on the very message he hoped would reach Forkbeard. It was all he could do not to grin. Forkbeard's land is my land, Olaf corrected and slid into a wide wooden chair, intricately hand-carved with the finest of details. His father usurped my throne long before the North was ripped apart to, me, to, apart to find me. Olga blushed. You're so quick to blame him for the death of your wife, she said, letting on more than she knew. Olaf stiffened in his chair, not bothering to keep the darkness within from rising, as the woman's words cut through the old wound that had never healed. The woman was right, he thought. Word has spread. 
Ola pardoned his gaze and forced himself to show no pang at the woman's words. What doubts he had of using her as a messenger vanished as he set his eyes on his target. I know my wife, Olaf said, letting the most of his bottled temper show a bit. Gatta was strong, and the last of the bloodline to the throne of Vendland. She didn't weaken so suddenly, lacking the will or the strength to deliver our firstborn. He held his breath. Olga gasped. She was with child. Olaf shifted an approving glance to Thor. News of her pregnancy reached the ears of Folkbeard, Olaf said. A month later, Gera died, and the throne of Fenland passed to Folkbeard, along with Jotland. Folkbeard, Olga said. Then why not declare war on Jotland? she asked once she recovered her voice. Why rape the land of your own people? Olaf furrowed his face in disapproval. Rape is harsh. As your new king, the subjects here are eager to contribute to my new campaign, if only to ensure their protection from foreign affairs. You call murder and scorch death in the name of your gods a contribution? Olaf asked. God, Olaf corrected. And by forcing my hand with the imperial god, I'll have won the favor of Otto III and the empire. They pay their endowed well. Sven Folkbeard won't see this coming. He'll lend Jutland into the war against Throndelag. I'll have the backing of the seat. And when Sven dies, my marriage to Tira will ensure that the land falls to you, Olga said. You would seek to rule all the north and Dan's reach. The peasant's understanding confirmed the solidar solid solidity in his plan. He couldn't help but smile. One conquest at a time, he said. Where is the Jarl? What hole does Jarl Haken cower in? Falkbeard won't stand for this, Olga's voice shook. He'll draw his attention from Ethelred. Olaf grinned. I do hope so. But Falkberg is slow to an anger. Even now he sits idle while I'm kept warm between the legs of his sister. The people will know, Olga shrieked. The people will learn! I am your rightful king, Olaf's voice boomed back. I declare the food you eat, the gods you praise, and the bedfellows you keep. Now! He rose to his feet. Where is your Jarl? Olga kept her silence. Thor! Olaf's eyes never left her. Ready the men for departure! In what direction are we heading? Thor asked. Dofrar! Olaf growled and watched the blood drain from Olga's face, leaving her a sickly shade of white beneath the web of edging lines. With a nod, Thor conceded, then stopped before carrying out the order. And the Sagonas we found? Olaf released Olga from his gaze as he shifted his full attention to Thor. Do any of them carry the pouch? Thor shook his head. Not the one you seek. Olaf's face fell dis with discouragement. Tie them to the banks of the need at low tide, Olaf said. As long as there is breath in me, I will not suffer the saved users to live. Thor nodded, and in silence left Olga, wife of Helvard, son of Sigurd, daughter of Dofrar, to the mercy of Eulaf.